Hi, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we are going to be looking at the perimeter of rectangles that involve measurements that are mixed numbers or fractions. We're in our math journal on page 290, so let's get started. It says, use a formula to find the perimeter of each rectangle. Use fraction circles if needed. Show your work in the space provided. Well, it would help if we start out by talking about the uh, formula for perimeter when it comes to rectangles. Okay, well, rectangles have four sides, and so the formula for uh, perimeter would be adding the four sides together. So it would be length plus length plus width plus width equals perimeter. That's the formula. So for problem number one, we would have to just add uh, the two lengths together plus the two widths together. Now, with most uh, illustrations like this one, even though there are four sides, they only took the time to give you two measurements, the length here and the width here. Uh, the folks who made this uh, math journal page are assuming that you can infer that if the top side of this rectangle is three and a half feet, then the bottom side, too, would also be three and a half feet. So for problem number one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write out the four measurements. So I'm going to write them up directly above my uh, formula here, three and one half feet plus three and one half feet again, plus two and a half feet plus two and a half feet again. Okay, so I wrote that out as a number sentence, but in order to solve this problem, it works better if I write it out vertically. So I'm going to rework that problem, 3 and 1 half, plus 3 and 1 half, plus 2 and a half, plus 2 and a half. So what I need to do is I need to start with the fractional uh, place value, okay? And once again, since I'm adding fractions that have a like denominator, meaning that the bottom numbers are all the same, I'm only going to have to pay attention to the top numbers here. So I'm basically adding ones because they're all halves. So I have four ones, so that gives me four halves. So I'm going to write it like this, four halves. Now I'm not going to leave that fraction that way, but I'm going to do some... Uh, do some more calculations. 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 2 more is 8, plus 2 more than that, that gives me 10. So right now my answer is 10 and 4 halves. Now that is not a mixed number. When my fraction is improper paired with a whole number, I can't have a mixed number. So I need to translate that improper fraction into uh, either another mixed number or a whole number. So the question is, how many groups of two can I get out of four? Well, you and I both know that two times two is four. So if I were to divide my numerator four by my denominator two, I would get two groups because two times two is four. There's nothing left over. So when I have four halves, that's the same as saying two wholes. So, 10 and 4 halves, another way of me thinking about that, 10 and 4 halves, is 10 plus 2. And what's 10 plus 2, everybody? That's right, 12. So my perimeter for uh, problem number 1 would be 12 feet. That's how I would go about solving the problem that gives me both the length and the width. Now then, let's look at problem number 3 for a moment. Uh, problem number three already has the perimeter, so we're not looking for the perimeter. We are looking for a missing uh, measurement. And we are given uh, one of the measurements is three-tenths of a meter. Okay, so I'm going to follow that formula again. Length plus length plus width plus width is going to give me the perimeter. So using what information I already have, this is how I'm going to set up my problem. The length is 3 tenths, so 3 tenths plus 3 tenths 
plus, we'll say w for width, plus w for width again, equals the perimeter, which is 8 tenths. Okay? Now, let's look at this problem again, but I'm going to reorganize this a little bit differently. Okay? So, I am going to uh, break this down into two parts, and I'm going to use some parentheses to help me. When I use parentheses, uh, that helps me order the operations. It tells me what to do first or second. So when I put parentheses around these two sets of addition problems, it tells me to add what's inside the parentheses first. Okay? So what I have here is 3 tenths plus 3 tenths plus two unknowns. So let's start with the first parentheses, 3 tenths plus 3 tenths. Well, 3 plus 3, you know, is 6. So this part of my problem is 6 tenths. Now then, let's re-look at this problem. I'm going to use some space down here. So if I were to rework this problem, I could say that it's 6 tenths plus something in these parentheses equals 8 tenths. So I have two w's, w plus w, so two widths, okay? So another way for me to think about w plus w is two w's, or two times w, because what is multiplication? It's just repeated addition. And if I'm just adding the same thing to itself once, it's like multiplying it by two. So now I have another way of looking at this problem, 6 tenths plus 2w equals 8 tenths. Now we're diving into a little bit of algebra right here, and that's okay. You're ready for it. So another way for me to look at this problem, 6 tenths plus something equals 8 tenths, okay, is to think about the uh, corresponding subtraction problem. So I'm going to turn this around. 6 tenths plus something e gives me 8 tenths. 8 tenths minus 6 tenths is going to give me something. That's my 2w. Now you've probably already done the mental math. 8 minus 6 is going to give me 2, 2 tenths. So 2w equals... 2 tenths. Now what is 2w? Well that is multiplying 2 times the width. Well something times 2 gives me 2 tenths. So now what I have to do is I gotta figure out what w stands for. Well you could probably guess that if I multiply some number 2 times a width and it gives me 2 tenths and if I look at my whole number on one side of the equation and my numerator on the other side of the equation, what I must be multiplying together is one-tenth. Two times one-tenth would give me two-tenths. I know that's true because if I think about that multiplication problem as repeated addition, one-tenth plus one-tenth gives me two-tenths. Okay? So now let's look at that rectangle again. So, if I were to say that the width is one-tenth, and if I were to go back and add those four measurements together, three-tenths plus three-tenths plus one-tenth plus one-tenth, two groups of one-tenth, it would be two-tenths. That gives me my perimeter, which is eight-tenths. So it works. And that's how we solve for perimeter. This is review of the concept of perimeter. The only thing that's different here is that we're now dealing with fractions and mixed numbers. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your math teacher. Otherwise, we will talk again soon. Thanks.